What's up everybody? <sighs> Today I want to talk to you about a dead simple patch on Serum using only sawtooth wavetables that sounds absolutely killer. I like to call this ARP the plucked super saw because, well, it's exactly that. The idea behind this patch is very simple and the sound is so good and so versatile that it can be used not only in Psytrance but in pretty much any genre of electronic music. I'm going to show you the basic concept of its synthesis and then I'm going to dive into a little bit extra in things such as the effects, macro assignments and little flavors that you can add to it so that you can have your own twist to this amazing sound. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to do is show you the final result of the patch, which is this one right here. I have it saved. I'm going to leave it um, in the comment section so that you guys can download it for free. Uh, let's first hear the kick and bass. It's pretty much a typical Psytrance rolling kick and bass, and it sounds like this. Okay, pretty straightforward. And this is the patch. and. Um, as the patch plays, I'm going to play around with the mod wheel here on my keyboard. Not sure if you guys can see it. Cool. So now let's start from scratch. So let's open up Serum. We go here on menu, initialize preset. And what we start with is, uh, let's solo the synth, the ARP, and we're gonna listen to it on the initialized preset. Doesn't sound so good, does it? So, first things first, we're gonna use both oscillators and they're gonna be an octave apart. So, oscillator A is just gonna use your regular sawtooth. We're gonna use the default sawtooth that comes right in the initial patch from Serum. And the oscillator B is gonna be one octave above. So we're gonna go ahead and push that one octave above. One thing that is very important on the super saw, a super saw um, is normally the term that you give to um, Synths that use saws, but they use many voices of unison that are detuned from each other. So it, it makes this massive sound. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use all 16 voices of unison on both of the oscillators. And it's going to sound like this. Cool. So how do we make this sound plucked? The way to do it is we're going to turn on the filter section. We're going to route both oscillators to the filter section. We're just going to keep using the uh, MG low filter and we're going to assign envelope number two to the cutoff. Okay. So you press option shift like this so that you make it unidirectional and we're going to bring this down to about 30 and the cutoff frequency is going to be around 100, 120, 150. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the sustain down all the way. And the decay is going to be around um, 200 milliseconds, right? So what that's going to do is the envelope is going to close the filter down on this range that we defined. So what's going to happen is that the sound is going to start brighter and then it will close down quickly on the cutoff. So it will lose its brightness on a short period of time precisely. 203 milliseconds because that's the decay that we set the sound to. So uh, let's listen to the patch and how it sounds now. You can hear that it already sounds a lot tighter and it sounds pluckier now. Now what we're going to do as well is grab the mod wheel here and we're going to assign that to the cutoff and we're just going to leave it like that. What that's going to do is now we have control over the overall brightness of the sound and we can automate that uh, further uh, when you're into your project and we can automate that up and down so that we can create tension, release tension, get the sound brighter, get the sound darker as we want. Uh, let me show you an example. I'm going to play it off and I'm going to move the mod wheel around so that you guys can see what I mean. <music> So 
if you notice this section over here, this is the mod wheel. I'm moving it on my keyboard, but it is routed to this. As I move up, you can see it gets brighter. And then as I move down, it will get softer. And this is a great um, thing to assign to pretty much any patch that you make. It is very important to move your synth sounds around to create more and less tension, depending on the section of the song that you're on. Uh, this really creates movement in your tracks. So yeah, guys, this is pretty much the meat and potatoes of how to make the basic patch. This is the basic idea that you can translate into any genre of electronic music. And the way you make it fit in other genres is by adding little effects, little macro assignments, and adding different flavors to it. But since we're talking about Psytrance, and this is going to be mainly a Psytrance channel, I'm going to show you how I normally process it and how I normally like to assign my macros and things to make it fit the genre of music that I make. So what normally happens when you're playing this, for example, on top of a kick and bass, like we have here on the project, is that it's going to sound, it's going to be lost in the mix when the mod wheel is all the way down. And the noise, we're going to use the noise to add a little bit of attack. This attack is going to make it a bit more plucky and it's going to make it stand out a little bit more when you have the mod wheel all the way down. So what I'm going to do is I will grab a, let's see, uh, attacks, miscellaneous, let's say guitar mute, right? So we're going to press this button over here, which is a one shot mode. I don't want the sound to keep looping and repeating because then it's going to sound a bit silly for the example that we're trying to make. And also I'm going to enable pitch tracking which is this button over here. It's moving an octave up, I believe. Let's see how that sounds. So if I mute the sound and you hear it by itself, it's just a bit of attack. It just adds a little bit of attack to the to the overall synth sound. Let's listen to the synth sound without it. And with it. It just adds a little bit of that extra punch. Now you can always uh, route it to the filter section so that the filter also affects the noise. But on this particular example, this noise oscillator is not too bright. So I'm just going to leave it out of the effects section. Now, one thing that in my opinion, I think is very important to do on your serum patches is assign the velocity to your um, levels here, because on your initial preset in serum, these sounds are not velocity sensitive and I do like to make them velocity sensitive because you know sometimes you want to add a little bit of dynamic you want to stress out some notes a little bit more and stuff like that so as you can see on my MIDI here I have the top notes on a higher velocity than the support notes on the bottom so that I can stress out the top notes which for me are the most important part of the melody so they will sound a little bit louder than the rest of the notes. And that adds a little bit of dynamic. It adds a little bit of human feeling to it, if you may. Okay, so now that this is done, let's jump into the effects section and start to shape the sound and make it a little bit more interesting. So one thing I like to do is add a little bit of distortion. The tube distortion is fine. It helps control a little bit of the dynamics as well as add a little bit of harmonics to the sound. We're going to keep it at the 25% setting over here. And also some phasing. Phasing is great. The phaser on Serum in particular is very good. And what I like to do, and I use this in a lot of my sounds uh, across different types, leads, arps, effects. The phaser really sounds good on anything. And what I like to do is I put the rate to zero so that it doesn't move around so that the phasing effect is static. I put the depth all the way down because the depth adds a little bit of uh, some stereo stuff that I don't particularly want on this um, sound. And we're going to bring the frequency all the way down. Um, now it sounds really nice around 30, 60 hertz. And what it does is it makes it sound like it's coming out of a guitar amp. So let me show you what I mean. So this is with it, and let's hear how it was without it. Now we 
put it on again. So it makes it sound very nice. Right now the effect is a little bit too exaggerated, so we're going to bring the mix down around 50, 60. Cool. So what's the next step? Well, if you're working on a big project and you already have uh, delay buses, reverbs that you are using in other sounds, you can always add the ambience outside of Serum. But for the purposes of this tutorial video, I'm going to add the ambience inside of the effect section. So what I like to do on this sort of patch is add a little bit of a delay. I put an eighth dotted on the left channel and a quarter note on the right. Some people like to just have the same values on left and right and put the ping pong. But for this particular example, I'm just going to do it manually. I'm going to bring the feedback down because I don't need a lot of repetition. There's already a lot of notes in the art MIDI that I show over here. So not necessary to have too much delay going on. Otherwise, it's going to muddy up the sound. Cool. So let's hear how that sounds now. Cool. It added a little bit of depth, but the sound obviously still needs some reverb. So let's add that. I'm going to use the hall reverb for that, but I think the decay, yeah, it might be a bit too long. So we're going to bring that down. We're going to bring the size a little bit down and cut a little bit of those lows. Cool. Let's hear how that sounds. Let's bring the mix up to about 30%. Cool. It sounds good so far. So, you know, you can, you can stop right here, but you know, you can always go further. And what I like to do is just assign a bunch of macros and also assign the mod wheel to some different parameters. So let's do this. For example, we can put the mod wheel to affect the frequency of the phaser and not by too much, just a little bit. Let's go to about 20 so that the sound is going to change its timbre as the mod wheel goes up as you make it brighter. It makes it a little bit more interesting. Cool. I'm going to try and use all four macros and assign them to different things so that you guys can see how powerful it is to assign a bunch of different things to different parameters of the effect section and even on the oscillator section. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of FM. FM is great to adding tension when you're doing a buildup or, or just trying to finish off your phrase and finish off a section. So we're going to go ahead on oscillator B and we're going to turn FM from A. Oscillator A is going to modulate oscillator B. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the macro and we're going to bring it to FM from A. And I'm just going to go all the way up. Let's retype this. We're going to put FM. And let's hear that sound. I'm going to put the mod wheel in the middle and let's hear it as I turn the FM up. So that's a great thing to have on Psytrance. Add that fm -y sound, you know, it just, it starts making weird stuff with your patch. It's very nice to add on buildups and stuff like that. So let's use macro two for, let's say, a flanger. Flangers are very common in Psytrance as well. So I'm going to sync this to the BPM and let's put it on 16 bars, for example. And we bring this feedback all the way up to 90%. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on the mix. So it's going to go all the way up. And what happens is that as you bring this sound up, it sounds more and more flangy. Let's hear how that sounds. Cool. I'm going to rename this to Flanger. Now, this sounds really nice, but the problem is uh, normally because of the high um, feedback of the Flanger, this sound can, you know, it can cause peaks in your, in your patch. So what I'd like to do is right after the Flanger, I add a little bit of a compressor, which is going to be with a super fast attack, pretty much instant. And, uh, you know, a fairly quick release just to control those peaks that the flanger is going to make once you turn it all the way up. So it's not going to do anything else other than that. I'm just going to control the dynamics with the flanger because it tends to cause problems. So this is macro number two. 
Now on macro number three, what we can also do is we can add a little bit of chorus and you can do a lot of crazy stuff with a chorus. Let's turn this to HPF, which is high pass filter. So the chorus is gonna have a high pass filter. It's just gonna start having this chorusy sound around a thousand Hertz. And we're gonna bring the feedback all the way up as well to 90%. And we're gonna grab the macro and we're gonna affect the mix all the way up to 100%. Now listen to this, it sounds really nice and it, it can be a nice touch to add to your Psytrance patches. <laughs> Nice, pretty crazy stuff. And once you have all of these macros and you start automating them and playing around with multiple macros at the same time, you can make really interesting sounds and make your sound design step to a whole different level. So I'm gonna rename this to Chorus, perfect. And now for the last one, what I would like to do is actually play around with the ambience and play around with the mix of the ambience. So we have both of these at 30%, I believe. Yeah. So we're going to grab this and let's, um, let's put it on 40. Yeah. So they're going to go up all the way to 70% mix when the macro is turned all the way up. I'm going to rename this to ambience. And this is, this is really nice. It sounds really cool because you can make it come from all the way back in the mix. It kind of sounds like it's far away and then it slowly gets closer as you bring the macro back down to 0%. Let's hear how that sounds. So I'm going to start with it at 100% and then I'm going to bring the mix down. Awesome, I really like that sound. This is a great way of making the synth sound come from the back of the mix all the way to the forefront. Now, as you may have noticed, when the knob is all the way to 100%, the volume is a little bit down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna assign this macro to the gain of the compressor all the way up there. So just 10, just a little bit because it's not too low but it's a little bit low so when I have the mix of the reverb and the delay all the way up we're gonna add a little bit of gain on the compressor so that the levels are kind of the same um, on both sides of the of the macro knob so let's hear how that sounds now perfect that sounds great awesome so you may have noticed that on my MIDI here and I can show you I have some overlapping notes that might have bugged you throughout this tutorial video, but I put them there for a purpose. Now you see these two notes overlapping and they don't sound great when they overlap. Why did I do that then? Well, what you can do, and this is a great thing that you see a lot in Psytrance, is you can make a glide sound. So if you put this on mono, legato, and then you go to the portamendo, and let's say I put it on one eighth. Maybe, maybe let's do it faster. Let's put it on 1 16th. This is a great thing, by the way, on Serum that you can do. You go to Global, and you can go here and select Double Clip for Typable Values on Controls. Now, you can go to any parameter here, and you can double click, and then you can type the thing. But one thing that many people don't know is that you can actually type musical values and Serum will know, will calculate for you what this means in milliseconds according to the BPM of your project. So if I put 1 16th, it will go to 107 milliseconds, which is exactly the length of a 1 16th note at 140 BPM. So now we know that when we have a glide, the glide is gonna take exactly 1 16th of a note, which is great. So now let's hear how these overlapping notes sound when they glide into each other. <laughs> Perfect. Now it sounds a little bit too fast, so we're going to go back to 1 8. There you go. So, this is normally how I would do my Super Saw ARP. Um, you know, I assign all of the different macros to different things, and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. This patch 
literally sounds good on top of a kick and bass line. It can sound good on a buildup, on a break. It's, it sounds good in pretty much any application. And like I told you, if you process the effects section in a different manner, you can make it fit in any genre of electronic music, really. Okay, so let's play around with the automation a little bit. I'm gonna grab the modulation and I'm gonna bring it up throughout these eight bars. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more tension at the end of the four bar section here and then I'm gonna bring it down a tad bit and then make it rise again. I'm gonna bring it down to about 50 and this is gonna go up to like 80. Okay, so now the brightness is going to go up across these eight bars. Cool, but what about the macros that we did? Well, let's automate those as well. Let's write down some automation. So let's add the FM, for example, that very gritty, crazy effect that we added on the first macro. And let's bring it all the way up on the last bar of the thing. And let's grab, for example, oh, where are we? Macro number two. Let's make it build up right over here at the end of this four bar section. And then we bring it all the way down right after it reaches its peak at the end of the fourth bar. Let's hear how that sounds. Cool guys, so obviously, you know, we assigned four different macros to it and you can play around with all four of them. I'm just gonna do these two so that you guys can have a good idea of what I mean. Uh, when it comes to adding all these flavors to your sound throughout the track with all of these different parameters. So this is it guys. I obviously shape my effects and macros in a more psytrance oriented fashion, but you can shape it any way you want to fit your music, especially on the effects section, which is so powerful in Serum. But anyways, I hope you liked my first tutorial on this channel and let me know in the comment section what you thought of it and what you would like me to talk about next. I'm always open to suggestions. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, listen to my music, follow me on social media and all of that jazz. Cheers guys and see you on the next video.